Alternating series error bound. Okay, so let's begin by showing that the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n factorial converges. And then we'll compute the first five partial sums and conjecture the sum of the series. So if we have the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n factorial, well first, this is alternating. So it has the negative 1 to the n term. Second, the individual terms of 1 over n factorial are getting smaller um, at some point. So when I plug in 0, I will get 1 over 0 factorial, which is 0. When I plug in 1, I'll get out 1 again, but then I'll start getting out 1 half, 1 over 6, 1 over 24, and so on. So a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n, so the terms are getting smaller. And then finally, the limit of the general term as n approaches infinity is converging to zero. So all three parts are true. By the alternating series test, this series converges. And we were trying to just show that, so show all three steps. Okay, so now second, we're going to compute the first five partial sums and conjecture the sum of the series. So let's write out this infinite series expanded. So if I were to plug in 0, right, negative 1 to the 0 is going to give me a positive 1, and then over 0 factorial, so I'm going to get my 1. So here are the terms right here, and we just have to make sure they alternate. So 1 minus 1 plus 1 half minus 1 6 plus 1 4, over 24 minus, and so on and so forth. So here's my um, infinite series expanded. I want to find the partial sum. So S1 is just the first term in the series. So that's 1. S2 is adding up the first two terms. So 1 plus negative 1, or 1 minus 1, is going to give me 0. S3 is adding the first three terms together. So the first two were 0 plus 1 half is just going to give me 1 half. And then S4, so I'm going to have to add 1 half to 1 6, or negative 1 6. So 1 over 2 is really 3 over 6 minus 1 over 6, so that's 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And then S5, so now I have to add the first five terms that are shown here, so we're going to go ahead and use S4, which is 1 third, and then plus 1 over 24. So 1 third can be rewritten as 8 over 24 plus 1 over 24, so this is 9 over 24. So here, if we think about each of these as a decimal, 1 half is 0 0.5, and 1 third is 0 0.3 repeating, and 9 over 24 is 0.375. So if we wanted to make a conjecture about what the actual infinite series sum to, well, we can go ahead and guess, I don't know, let's say maybe it converges to 0.4. We're not really sure is the point, um, but we know that it converges because we showed that the infinite series converges. And we, so that means the limit of the partial sums has to go to a particular number. And based on this, it looks like it's slowing down at around 0.3 something. So let's just say it converges to 0.4. The point is, we're not sure. But the question is, how far off would this um, fifth partial sum be from what the actual series converges to? So that's what our goal is about to be, is we're not going to be able to find what the series converges to, but we're going to be able to figure out how far off an nth partial sum is from what the actual series converges to. Alternating series error bound. If the sum of a sub n is a convergent alternating series in which the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 is greater than a sub k, so in other words, the terms individually are getting smaller for all k, at least past some certain point, they're getting all smaller, then the error in the nth partial sum is going to be no larger than the a sub n plus first term in absolute value bars. So if I find the fifth partial sum, how far off that is from the actual answer can be no bigger than the absolute value of the a sub sixth term um, in the actual series. So let's go ahead and go back to the example that we were working on um, and use this alternating series error bound. So find the error in S sub 5, the fifth partial sum, given the alternating series we were working with that we know converged the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n factorial. So we found that our fifth partial sum was 9 over 24, which was 0.375. And 
let's go ahead and rewrite out the terms in our uh, series again. We had 1 minus 1 plus a half minus 1 6 plus 1 over 24 and then minus the next term here um, would be 1 over 120. So 1 over 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and 5 factorial. So in other words, this is the first term. This is, this is the second term, 1, 1 half, 1 6, 1 fourth. And so the sixth term in the sequence would be negative 1 over 20, but I want the absolute value of that. So here's S5. A sub 6, the sixth term, is actually going to be negative 1 over 120, but I want the absolute value of that. So positive 1 over 120. So finding the fifth partial sum, the, our approximation for what this infinite series converged to, well, how far off is it? It can be no more off than 1 over 120. So another way to think about that is that the series negative 1 to the n over n factorial from n equals 0 to infinity, it is trapped between 9 over 24 plus 120. So the actual answer is 9 over 24 plus 1 over 20. It's between that quantity and 9 over 24 minus 1 over 120. So that's what the actual series converges to. So if we find the sixth partial sum, it can't be any further off than the seventh term in the actual expanded out series. All right, for another example, use the alternating series error bound to estimate the amount of error involved in approximating sine of 1 with a third degree Maclaurin polynomial. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. The sine function has its Maclaurin polynomial, right? Sine is approximately x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6. So that's the third degree Maclaurin polynomial. So how bad is this approximation for sine when I substitute in 1, in other words? So sine of 1 is then approximately 1 minus 1 cubed over 6. So this is now exactly 1 minus 1 6 is going to be, this is 6 over 6 minus 1 over 6. So 5 over 6 is the approximation for sine of 1. How bad is it? Well, because sine is an alternating series, what we can do is we can look at the next term in the alternating series. So this would be plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, which is 120. So the x value that we were talking about is 1. So how far off is this? So sine of 1 is trapped between 5 over 6 plus 1 over 120. So plugging 1 into the next term in the alternating series is going to give me my error. So that's the amount of error. So the, the error itself um, has to be less than or up to 1 over 120. So sine of 1 itself is trapped between 5 over 6 plus 120 and 5 over 6 minus 120. So this this alternating series error bound gives us a good approximation or a good um, feel for how good or bad our approximation actually is. So remember that our Taylor polynomials actually have some error to them because they stop at some point. So sine x is exactly the Taylor series expansion that goes on forever, but we stopped at the third degree, so there is going to be some error. So how bad is it by stopping at the third degree polynomial? Well, it's as bad as the next term substituting that x value into the next term, that's how potentially far off we can be. All right, and in this last example, what degree Maclaurin polynomial is guaranteed to estimate cosine 3 with an error of no more than 0 0.001? So let's go ahead and write out the Maclaurin polynomial for cosine. So cosine x is approximately 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, plus x to the 8th over 8 factorial, minus x to the 10th over 10 factorial, and so on. So 
what degree McLaurin polynomial is guaranteed to estimate cosine 3 with an error of no more than 0 .001? 0 .001. So this is 1 over 1,000, right? 1 thousandth is what I want the error to potentially be. So in other words, let's say I use a degree 2 Taylor polynomial. So if I use a degree 2 Taylor polynomial, well, the error is going to be as bad as the next term in this um, expanded out polynomial. So if I approximate it using just these first two, then my error is going to be as bad as this term right here. So if I plug 3 into this x, so 3, over, 3 to the 4th over 4 factorial, I want to figure out what number this is and compare it to 1 over 1,000. So I need this number to be less than 1 over 1,000 in order for the answer to be a degree 2 Taylor polynomial. So we're going to have to plug this into our calculator, and I'll tell you that that is 3.375. So that's terrible. That's definitely a, an error that's greater than 1 over 1,000. So a degree 2 polynomial isn't going to give us a really good estimate or that good of an estimate for cosine 3. So now, well, would a fourth degree Taylor polynomial work? Well, then I'd have to check what happens when I plug 3 into x to the 6 over 6 factorial. So 3 to the 6 over 6 factorial is going to give me 1.0125. Still not good enough. So we're going to have to keep going, in other words, and I'm just going to go ahead and start listing them out. So if I have 3 to the 8th over 8 factorial, that's going to give me 0 0.1627. So we're getting closer. And now 3 to the 10th over 10 factorial is 0 0.01627. But finally, 3 to the 12th over 12 factorial is going to get us to 0 0.00. 1, 1, 0, 9, 9, etc. So, in other words, I need to stop at a degree 10 Taylor polynomial in order to get an error that's going to be no more than 0 0.001. So, the answer here is what degree McLaurin polynomial do you need? So, it was the 12th um, term that gave us to less than 0 0.001. So, the degree that I actually need is the one previous to that. So, I need a degree. 10 Taylor polynomial to guarantee um, that I'm going to have an error of no more than 0 0.001.